All right, everybody, we're going to talk about an engine run up real quick, okay? So we're going to continue to go down the checklist. So parking brake is going to be on. All right, cabin doors are latched. Flight controls ran correct. So what you want to do is you want to do a box pattern, okay? So I do like this. I keep my thumbs up, go all the way in, turn left. I look out on the left wing. See your thumbs? That aileron on my left wing should be in the up position. The one on my right wing should be in the down position, okay? So that's correct. So I'm going to go all the way back with it. I turn the other way. The other uh, ailerons are deflected the correct way. So the right one's up, the left one's down. That's good. Then I'm going to go back and I'm going to look back at the tail. My elevator is deflected up. It's deflected down. Rudder pedal's right and left. So all my flight controls are free, correct. Nothing's hanging up anywhere and they're all uh, operating in the correct way. All right, elevator trim is going to be set off into the takeoff position. That's good. All right, so now we're going to do the actual engine run-up. So mixture's full rich. We're going to increase the throttle to 1,600 RPM. That's what you do for this old Continental six-cylinder engine. Okay, so now we're going to test the magnetos. Okay, so we're going to go to, we're running on both magnetos now. We're about to turn one off, and so it's only going to be operating on one set of magnetos and one set of spark plugs, which is going to cause us to have a decrease in power, okay? So we're going to go to left magneto, so we have a drop about 50 RPM, maybe 75, that's good. So we're going to go back to both, and now I'm going to go two clicks to the right magneto. Have about the same amount of drop there, okay, that's good. Now you want to know, it gets it in your head, your maximum drop is going to be 150 RPM, okay? If you have more than that, you're, you're going to know it, okay? You're going to have a bunch of da 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 you know, it's, you're going to have a foul plug, a bad plug, um, things like that, uh, or maybe the engine uh, magnetos aren't timed at all, you know, that they're way off. So your maximum RPM, remember that, 150 RPM. Okay, so now we're going to check the uh, carburetor heat. So we're going to pull the carburetor heat, and we're going to look for a drop in RPM. So that means hot air is going up into the engine and causes a loss in engine power. So we're going to go back in. That is good. Suction gauge is going to be over here in the far right, so we want it between four and a half and five and a half, so it's probably about 5.2 right there. Okay, then we just ease the throttle back to idle. There's no need to just yank the throttle out and yank it in. Be real rough. You want to learn to finesse the aircraft, okay? All right, so then we go to engine instruments. So, oil pressure is in the green, oil temperature is in the green, cylinder head temperatures, everything is good. Ammeter, a lot of times you have just a gauge that shows a positive uh, charge or negative charge or somewhere in between. In these old models, we just have a light. So if the generator fails, this light's going to come up. Let's see if I can get it to do it. So like that. So I pull the, pull the power all the way to idle so the engine's not turning fast enough to charge everything. So the red light will come on. So we just go back in with it so that's operating correctly. Flight instruments set. We want to double check the flight instruments from whenever we set them on the ramp to when we got down to here. Okay. We want to look and see if if there's been a big change. Maybe one of them's not working. Maybe the DG's not set at all uh, or working at all. And uh, that's how you you catch your instrument failures uh, before you go airborne, especially in IFR conditions. You don't want to go airborne and fi figure out your directional gyro is not working or your attitude indicator is not working. You want to figure that stuff out on the ground. Okay. All right, so radios are set. So maybe uh, we're departing Gainesville and uh, talk to Fort Worth Center. So I'm going to go 124.75. Okay, so that way my radios are set. So whenever I get airborne, click one button, and I'm talking to center. I'm not having to look into charts and do all that stuff. Transponder, you want to set that to altitude reporting. So it's going to show our position and what altitude we are to the air traffic controllers. Fuel selectors, both. Mixtures full rich. Windows are closed. Park and brake, brake we can turn off. Clock and timer, so we can go over here and you can hit the hit the clock and start it for your cross country flight. Normal takeoff, wing flaps are going to be in the up position. Mixture rich, carburetor heat cold. Throttle's going to be full open. We're going to rotate to 60 and climb out 85. Okay, another tip for doing the engine run up or any type of procedures point to each thing that you're doing. Mixture rich, carburetor heat cold, fuel selector both, and that way you're not going to miss it and you're going to be more likely to do it. So, uh, a good example is 
uh, flight instruments. Okay, reading zero. That's set based off of our compass. Our attitude ind indicator is good. It's got a little bit of a off flag, but that's because we're at idle. Our suction gauge is low. We're at 845 feet. That's correct. That's set. VSI is reading zero. Okay. Maybe, and then just continue on to other things. Steep belts on, maybe before landing checklist. Seat belts on, fuel selectors both. Mixtures full rich, car bear heat is on. Flaps is desired, approach speed 65, 75 miles per hour, okay? All right, so that's uh, pretty much the engine run up and, and what you're kind of looking for whenever you do it.